I'm Lynn Stahl. I was born August 8, 1943, so I'm 72 and a half. And I was born um, in Chicago, but instantly went up to a little tiny town, Ishpeming, Michigan, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And my mother had been from a Reform Jewish background from Chicago, and my father was raised in this very small town north of Ishpeming, even farther up the peninsula in Hancock. Michigan. And from the time I was a little girl, I was very aware that I was Jewish. It was just a part of who I was. A very strong part of my identity came because there were so few Jewish people in the area in which we were raised. And I, I was very comfortable being Jewish, even though I was the only um, Jew in my whole neighborhood and, and so forth, except this cousin and then my sister. And I used to have great big wonderful discussions with my friends in high school who were Catholic and Protestant. Um, and, the, and I was sort of the, um, the I think the self-appointed or they appointed me expert on Judaism because all of my contemporaries were um, something else. But it, it created an incredible comfort for me in terms of interfaith relations. I will say that Hanukkah was a very minor holiday um, because I think my parents, especially my mother, had a huge need for us not to be different. So we had a giant Christmas tree and until we were 10. And Christmas was really important. It happened to also be my mom and dad's anniversary. So Hanukkah paled. And um, it's an interesting um, life experience that I was raised until I was 10 with the Christmas tree, but then we continued to have Christmas. And I think in a way, um, it was just a reflection of the times my parents in the 40s, early 50s, did not want us to be different. And yet it's a missed opportunity because I, I personally, in workshops I've done and so forth since, and have said if we can teach children to celebrate differences and being the other, there is such a, a wonderful opportunity to nourish the uniqueness and you not feel as if the other is bad. And so, you know, our children fortunately never had, had a, I think, a longing for Christmas. It was just sort of, we didn't do it. Now, we made a big deal in our family with our, our children of some of the other Jewish holidays. Well, I think that's why I love being married to Sam, because he's such an open um, rabbi. He loves interfaith work. And we have no problem going to um, services, you know, Islamic services, Catholic, Protestant, and so forth, because it's, you know, God is God. And so we have different paths to how to get there. And, you know, my path works for me. I think the greatest part of, frankly, of being married to a, a rabbi is that people have an automatic, um, not always founded, trust in me because they know, A, I won't talk. I can't. I have to be like a tomb. And when they said, please don't tell Sam, I don't tell him because I, I don't want him to perhaps change his idea about somebody, you know, let him know if they're going to tell him. Um, but we have had so many incredible opportunities to be in intimate situations with people, both in tragic times and in glorious times. So we see how people react. And that's just more information, life's lessons, how, how to deal with life's lessons. How do you do the dying stages? How do you handle a 
60th wedding anniversary, you know, so it's been wonderful. Forgiveness is far more important for me than for anyone else because as long as I cannot forgive another human being, um, it's weighing me down. Um, one of my biggest challenges right now, and I fight it daily, is not being prejudiced against prejudiced people and trying to uh, understand that they are where they are because of some kind of fear. I mean, I really believe that there are only two basic feelings. There's love, which I try to marinate in. I really do. And then there's fear. And fear turned inward is depression, and fear turned outward is judgment and anger. And when I get into that, then I'm out of the love. So it's not serving me, you know, and what's that horrible saying, I'd rather be right than happy? I'd rather be happy. And if I have to swallow my ego or, or whatever, um, I have to, you know. So I think forgiveness is absolutely critical to, um, to I mean, I want to live in the moment. I really want to be in the moment. And if I've got all this stuff weighing me down, I'm not in the moment. I'm in the past or I'm in the future. But I feel like after I die, there's more. What there is, I don't know. Will I be back? I don't know. Have I been here before? I don't know. But I never would shut doors on, on any of that. And it's very Jewish. That's you know amazing. A lot of people don't know that Jews. It's not a major, major, I mean, the major belief in Judaism is that we live on in the good deeds that we've done and how we impact those around us. And it, which is a totally non-ego thing because in three generations, I mean, what, we're completely forgotten. I'm on the planet to grow my soul. And how do I grow my soul? Hopefully leaving this place a little bit better than the way I, you know, making a difference. I want to make a difference somehow or other. Um, do I do that every day? I try. I wake up every single morning no matter what. And before anything I say, thank you God, I am so grateful and I think showing gratitude is critical. And then I pray for those I'm so concerned about. And I put out intentions for me. I want to be in the moment. I want to be patient. I want to stay out of judgment and in love. Well, I actually did one last year. I was 72 on my last birthday and, you know, 18 times four is 72, so it was a, an important birthday. I haven't given it to them, but um, basically what I would hope is that they could appreciate the goodness within themselves and nurture that goodness within themselves so they then can hopefully see the mirrors in everybody else to find the goodness. I would hope that they would find um, a way to give back to our society um, each and every day. I would hope that they would be able to somehow or other find meaning somewhere or other in Judaism, whether it be um, either spiritually or conventionally or whatever. And I hope they could find joy and enjoy each day, be able to come to the end of each day and say, um, you know, no matter what happened, 
I could find something today, no matter how difficult it was. I, what I'm so aware of is the one thing I really believe is truth, is that no matter what in this world, things are going to change. And so when they're really, really terrible, they are going to get better. And if I can believe that, then when they get good, instead of my worrying, well, they're going to get bad again, I better enjoy and massage that good time because, I mean, I'm sitting here right now and, you know, who knows what when I walk out the door. But right this minute, things are really good. And so if they can be in the moment with a belief in something bigger than themselves, because it's an awful burden to think that we only have ourselves. I mean, I think not having the belief in um, a spirit larger than us is huge. And the final thing I would say to them is the concept of the other only separates us, no matter what it is, whether it's somebody who is a different race, a different religion, a different, uh, a different socioeconomic person. I mean, and if we can find our humanity in each other, then I think that's why we're here.